Hello everybody, how are you doing? In this lesson we will demonstrate how to use AJAX to post form data to a PHP file and then get return data without page refresh. And some people like to use jQuery to help them post AJAX calls to PHP without having to know what is taking place in the code, but I bet some of you guys would love to know how the raw AJAX mechanism is assembled and how it all works in the guts of things. And trust me, it's so easy that a 12-year-old kid can manage creating their own custom AJAX calls to PHP after watching this video and snatching this free script from developphp.com. Alright, I'll be using Dreamweaver CS5 as my text editor. And you can use whichever one you want because we're not going to be in design view at all. So you can use Notepad if you want. Now you can see I have the beginnings of a very simple web document here. And the first thing I'll do is go into the body section and type in AJAX post to PHP and get return data and I'll just take that and wrap it in an H2 tag by highlighting that text and pressing control 2 in Dreamweaver. Now I want to have a field for your first name so this will be like the field label and there's the text field you can see it has it's an input text field it's a form element in HTML it has an ID of first name the name is also first name for that element. I'm going to go one line down, put in a break tag, and I'm going to highlight this line and copy it and paste it here. And then I'm just going to put in last name here and change these to last. And you'll notice that it's not going to be necessary for me to put in a form opening tag and a form closing tag. I can just have form elements where I need them and then Ajax can do the processing or JavaScript really can do the processing. All right, let's pop another break tag right here, and let's take two break tags, put them under this one, because we're going to put a button here now. Actually, on the break tags, I'm going to put the forward slash, because you'll notice that those break tags, if you just have BR by itself without the forward slash in it, it doesn't validate W3C. Now we can just put our cursor here, go up to form, hit the button right there, and we'll choose a submit button name we can just make it my btn and the value can be submit data whatever you want that to say press ok now all you have to do is add the on click event for this button so on click what we're going to do is fire up a javascript function called ajax post so you just type in javascript colon and then the function that you want to fire off on click of this button so when somebody clicks this button, we're going to make this function called Ajax Post fire up. Now this function called Ajax Post just needs to be assembled here in the head tag of this document. We'll send that into PHP file, no problem. Okay, now let's pop in that JavaScript function. And you can see lines 4 through 25. And it's really not bad. And some of those lines are actually comments that I put in there. Now let me explain the code to you real well. And also let me reassure you that I fully tested this in Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome, Opera, and all the newest versions of all those popular browsers. And it works nicely in all of them. So as you can see here, function Ajax post. And that's the one that fires off, remember, on click of this button. So if you go in design mode, you'll see exactly what we have. So what happens is they put their first name, they put their last name, then they click submit data, and that's the button when they click it, fires off the Ajax post function here. The first thing we need to do is create our XML HTTP request object. So I just named that HR short for HTTP request. Now we create some variables we need to send to our PHP script. The first one is URL and that's going to be equal to whatever the name of your PHP parsing script is. The next variable is going to be called FN and that's going to be equal to the first name, whatever the value is in this first name field. The way I accessed that was through document.getElementById and I just claimed the first name field to grab that ID for that field and then dot .value. I used the value property for it. And that way you can get the value for what is in the field when the person clicks that button. So it's in a variable called fn. Same for the last name, that's in a variable called ln. And the last variable we need is one called vars. And this is where you can assemble your URL encoded variables. So you have key value pairs. My first key is first name. And the value for that is my fn variable. 
whatever the person types in for their first name. Now my next variable, key, is going to be last name, and that's going to be equal to whatever they type in for their last name. Those are the variables that are going to be sent to my PHP script, this URL. Now we're going to use the open method on the XML HTTP request object right here, and we're going to set its parameters. We're going to use post instead of git. We're going to set the URL that's supposed to be in place for the parsing. And we set the last parameter to true, which lets the method know that we want it to happen asynchronously. Now the next thing we do is set the content type header information for sending the URL encoded variables in the request because right up here we're sending URL encoded variables, key value pairs that are separated by the ampersand. The next line is we access the on ready state change event for the XML HTTP request object. Now what on ready state changes is an event of the HTTP request object I can't even say it anymore, the XML HTTP request object, it's an event of that object that triggers every time the ready state changes. And the values are 0 through 4 for the ready state. And we can make a function fire off every time the ready state changes by listening and using this on ready state change event. And there's a function that's going to fire off every time the ready state changes. So when that ready state changes, any time throughout the document, for instance, 0 means not connected yet. Well, I think 1 is establishing connection, 2 is establishing communication, or some crap like that. But 4 is when it's complete. And all throughout the transaction of the data, there's going to be this on ready state change is going to be going from 0 to 4. So when this ready state changes, this function is going to fire off. And you can see that there's a little bit of code inside of that function, four lines and it's just an if statement, a conditional. And that conditional reads, if our object's ready state is equal to 4, which means complete, and the object's status is equal to 200, which means OK, then we can go ahead and process the return data in our document. And you just scoop up the return data that PHP spits back to this file by using the response text property on your object. Now the next line is communication for some kind of div or box that you have on the page, which I didn't even put in place yet. Let me go ahead and put that now. I'll just pop it right here on the bottom. I'll put a couple of break tags, then right there on the bottom. And it's a div, and you can use span if you want. You can use a paragraph tag if you want, as long as you give it the ID of status. That way the JavaScript can communicate with it. So when the data gets back from the PHP file and all is done processing, then you can update that status field to put any kind of data that's coming back from the PHP file, some kind of thank you message or whatever you want to put there. And I'm going to show you what we're going to have in our PHP file, don't worry. So now there's only really two lines left to this whole function, Ajax post. Now this on ready state change functionality and this function that fires off, and this conditional that we have in here are all things that happened after you use this send method. Now the send method sends the request off to the server and it's going to contact the PHP file and send these variables that we assign here. So you can put your parameter variables right there. And really this line is where we actually execute the request. And I put a little comment here for you guys that says send the data to the PHP now and wait for the response to update the status div. So before you're even listening to the on ready state change, you want to put in the status div maybe a little animated GIF loader. I just put the word processing by using the inner HTML property for that element, which is the status box down here. All right, this Ajax post function is going to be looking for my parse file.php to communicate with, so that's what we got to create right now, real quick. So let's go to File, New, PHP, let's get rid of all that data, and let's put in this data. And don't worry, I'll have all this scripting available at Develop PHP under the video where it's playing there. So let me go ahead and save this as the proper file name, which is My Parse File. File, save as My Parse File, save. Okay. Now we can test it out. And you have to make sure that you're on a server that processes PHP. Because on some people's local machines, PHP won't process. So you have to throw it up on your server that's PHP enabled for this whole script set to work. 
All right, so take note of what it says in the PHP file here. It says, thank you. It's going to say first name, last name. It says the PHP file. So that way, if you get this response back in your original document that has the form on it, then you know that your Ajax post happened successfully and everything worked out fine. All right, let's show you guys that it works. I'll put in Adam, Corey, submit data. And it said processing for a split second there. And that is where you can put an animated loader if you want. So here we have the information back from PHP file that says, thank you, Adam Corey, says the PHP file. So you know everything worked nice. And you have a nice, smooth, lightweight Ajax post to PHP mechanism now. Or you can even externalize this. You can put this function into an external JavaScript file and call on it whenever you need to post to a PHP script using Ajax.